it's Nisha here and welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be a little chit chat, hair update, kind of hair goals for 2021 but not really because I haven't really thought them fully through and I'm gonna kind of be talking through them and thinking through them in this video. Just sharing some tips with you. Uh, I feel like my hair has made a lot of progress within the past six months five to six months and so I just wanted to share some of those things with you just discuss this hair and all that good stuff and just have a nice little you know chit chat little video with y'all many of you have seen my video that I posted in the summer I want to say I posted maybe like July or August of 2020 talking about how YouTube ruined my hair and I know that was an exaggeration but I felt like the things that I was doing for my YouTube videos was adding to the the detriment and kind of a bit of the downfall of the health of my hair. Health of my hair has always been my goal and been my focus. I've wanted... <laughs> I've talked about length retention a little bit here and there, but healthy hair has always been my goal. Just having healthy, thick, strong, moisturized, hydrated hair at whatever length my hair wants to be at. And that was fine with me. And I started to experiment with brands that I wasn't necessarily interested in, but thought that you all would be interested in, um, wasn't really paying attention to what my hair needed. Um, I wasn't really doing any protective styles. I was doing wash and goes, wash and goes, wash and goes, wash and goes, wash and goes. Doing a lot of things that weren't great for my hair. And the video that made me really realize, like, girl, your hair ain't what it used to be is my Camille Rose uh, curl maker video. I have multiple videos on the Camille Rose curl maker, but I'm talking about the very first time I tried that product for a wash and go. I was not feeling that wash and go. Part of it was due to the actual product. Like me and curl, curl maker aren't the best of friends. We're cool, but we ain't the best of friends. But a lot of it also had to do with the health of my hair. I will go and insert footage from that wash and go from that video and you'll see that my ends were all scraggly. I had like long pieces and short pieces and just my hair was just horrendous. My ends were atrocious and I made a video about how I was unhappy with my hair, about all the things that I thought was adding to the issues that I was having with my hair and I came up with a plan to let y'all know what steps I was going to take. And I actually had a video um, that I'll share up here where I actually go into depth about all the things I was going to do for my hair and how I was going to nurture it and get it back to being a healthy head of hair. So here we are some months later and I was blowing out my hair because I'm actually about to do a protective style and I noticed number one how quick it was for me to blow dry my hair and it wasn't because I did anything, you know, spectacular or anything different. It wasn't because I was using different products. I was using my same regular, regular, regular products that I love. But I noticed that it was easy to go through my hair because my ends were actually in pretty good, decent health. I don't know if y'all can tell now. But a lot of times when you have a bunch of split ends, a bunch of dead ends, and you try to blow dry your hair, you try to detangle, you have a more difficult time doing that because you have these rough ends that are just making it really hard for you to detangle your hair, for you to put a comb through it, for you to put a brush through it. And so typically that's what I experience when I'm blow drying my hair because I use the comb attachment and it just is a struggle. And I was noticing like, girl, this blow dryer and these brushes and these tools you use and gliding through your hair real well like it took me all of like 30 minutes to blow dry my hair and usually it's like an hour process and I was going through big big sections normally I have to blow dry my hair in small sections in order to get my hair like this straight but I don't know if y'all can tell and I this is also kind of like a link check for me but I remember in the video where I got my trim. I'll go ahead and link it above for you in the cards. I got a trim back in August and that was kind of the reset for my hair. And I'm pretty sure she had cut it to about like right here. 
So I have this much growth. Let's see if I can show you. Cut it to about right here, and I would say that this is five to six months worth of growth right here. And if you can see, my ends for it being five months, almost six months since I got my trim, my ends are not bad. I definitely do think that I need to get them trimmed, but it would be like not even half an inch that I would need to trim off. And for me, that is amazing because I was trimming my hair every three months, four times a year because my ends were so horrific and they needed to be trimmed but now I can go I can go almost five to six months without a trim like I know how y'all see that my hair is literally thick from the roots down to the tip like that is just crazy to me like yeah this is a little scraggly but like for me to only have to cut like that much off my hair like that is wild to me. So things that I have to say that are attributing to me retaining length and me getting my hair back healthy is one, protective styles. I don't feel like we talk about protective styles as much as we used to. I feel like protective styles were a big thing back in like the 2010s. Um, early 2010s, I feel like protective styles were really like pushed a lot on YouTube. And not saying that we don't do protective styles because obviously, you know, the butterfly locks is popular, passion twists are popular, knotless braids are popular. Those aren't the only like protective styles out there. You could do like the little milk braids where you just uh, cornrow your hair or do a flat twist and just tuck your ends. Anything where you tuck your ends. Um, I feel like we don't really talk about that anymore, but I've noticed such a significant difference in my hair from protective style. I never really was a protective style girl. Like, I wanted to show off my hair. I wanted to wear my hair out, wear my twist out out, wear my wash and go out. And I realized that I don't have to do that. I can get cute styles while protecting my hair. So protective styling once a month for at least a week has been a game changer. I actually have a protective style playlist where I have you know, protective styles that I do to my own hair where I also add some, you know, extensions or whatever to my hair as well. So I'll leave that in the cards for you. But y'all, protective style. It may not work for everybody. Sometimes protective styling is a little bit of over manipulation. Um, so if it doesn't work for you, I totally understand. But if you feel like you aren't retaining length or your ends are all scraggly and you haven't really been protective styling, definitely protective style. Something else that has been helping me is my no wash and goes. Well, at least for the winter. Wash and goes, they just really tangle my hair to be quite honest because every single little curl of mine is super defined. It gets wound up on each other. My hair is not stretched really. Like, of course I do stretch out my wash and goes a little bit just to give me a little bit of length. But compared to like a twist out or a braid out or a tweed out or anything, any other style, that is where my hair is in the most shrunken state. And it just gets tangled on one another. So I'm limiting my wash and goes. Something else that has really been helpful for me is just not using trash products. <laughs> now, have I tried products recently that I'm not the biggest fan of? Yes, but once I find out that I'm not the biggest fan of them, I don't keep trying them out. I don't try to make them work. If there's a product that I'm kind of on the fence about where I'm thinking that it's not necessarily a terrible product, but maybe I just didn't use it in the best way or maybe I needed to pair it with something else, then yes, I'll experiment and come up with my verdict later. But if I instantly feel like I don't like a product, I do not use it anymore. I'm either gonna give it to somebody else that I think will enjoy it or I'm going to take it back to the store and get my money. I'm not here for trash products. Um, something else that I've been doing and y'all have seen me and heard me talk a lot about it is pre-pooing. I pre-poo every single wash day and that's just what I do, it helps to detangle my hair, it helps to moisturize my hair, especially if I'm about to go in with a super, um, not stripping, but like a clarifying shampoo, it helps me with that. 
So pre-pooing has been a godsend for sure. And also the lock method. I have recently reintroduced the lock method. I used to do it when I was first natural and I kind of strayed away from it because I felt like my hair was oily, but to be honest, it probably was user error. I was being too heavy handed with the oil and that's why my hair was oily. But now, especially for the winter, I have been doing the lock method and I've really been seeing my hair moisturize longer, which I really do like. I want to experiment and I don't know, is this a method y'all? It probably is a method. There's all types of methods. But I also want to do like leave-in cream butter. Was that LCB? I want to do that method and see how I like that compared to the lock method. What else? Oh y'all, going back to a comb instead of a brush. On my hair y'all, combs are just so much more gentle on my hair. I have absolutely been enjoying my wide tooth combs. Haven't really been using my Tangle Teaser or my Felicia Leatherwood brush. I haven't really used those except for certain styles that call for it, like when detangling my hair for this blowout, I did use the Tangle Teaser. But other than that, I either use my fingers or I use a comb. Y'all, brushes really do just like yank out your hair. When you finger detangle or when you use a wide tooth comb, you're able to feel that knot and you can stop yourself and just go ahead and try to, you know, detangle it yourself with your fingers. Whereas a brush, the brush does not stop. The brush just rips through that tangle and then that's it. Now I'm not saying to never ever use a brush, but definitely fingers and wide tooth combs have been the best thing for me, honestly. Protein, y'all, also protein, 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 protein. My hair, now I can't speak for nobody else hair, but my low porosity type 4A, type 4B, type 4, whatever you wanna call it, hair, likes protein. Does it like a whole lot of protein all the time? No, too much in excess is actually bad for you. If you drink too much water, there is a such thing as drinking too much water, you actually can die. Too much of a good thing can be bad for you. Protein is good. Using too much of it can be bad. But there's different limits for everybody. You just gotta figure out what your limit is, how much protein your hair can take, regardless of your porosity, regardless of your hair type. You just gotta experiment. Be careful with your exper experimentation, but you just have to experiment and figure out what works best for you. I've noticed that doing strong protein treatment every two to three months is most beneficial for me, and then also introducing bits of protein here and there through like protein moisture balance deep conditioners. I found that that has really helped my hair as well. I think that my hair was over moisturized at some point. I don't think that my hair had any high growth fatigue, but I feel like it was getting there. <laughs> and if I didn't start to really keep introducing protein to my hair, then it could have gotten there. Um, but yeah, protein, 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 protein moisture balance. That's what I should be saying. I actually did a whole like my protein moisture balance, like hair routine video. I'll go ahead and link that above in the cards for you as well. That gives you like details on um, when do I shampoo, when do I co-wash, when do I clay wash, when do I use a moisturizing deep conditioner, when do I use a protein moisture balance deep conditioner, when do I do a protein treatment. I have all of those details in that video for you, so definitely check that out. Um, as far as goals for 2021, I just want to keep this hair nice and healthy like it is now. I want to be able to go five to six months between trims without having to trim like inches off, like an inch, inch and a half off. I don't want to do that. Um, let's see. My hair is like kind of grazing my boob. So by 2021, or actually by 2022, I would want, let's see. See if we can get hair down here, so past my boob. Right now, it's like so kind of sitting at my boob. We want it past the boob. I want to come up with more creative protective styles for you all. 
some that are easy, some that are, you know, might take a little time and effort and patience, but that are still cute. Um, what else do I want to do? I still kind of do want to experiment with styles I haven't tried before. So I have not tried a flexi rod set on my hair. I have successfully done a perm rod set in 2020. Hand clap, proud of myself because I've tried them so many times and they never worked. And so I finally got it to work and it was a success for sure. So I want to try a flexi rod set. Ooh, I want to do like a, a slick, like a slick back style with the like the ponytail, the added hair. I'll put a picture of what I'm talking about because I'm not really describing it very well. I don't know, I just want to experiment and have fun, but at the same time still having my focus in the back of my mind, which is healthy hair and doing things to my hair that I know my hair likes. Staying away from things that I know that my hair don't like. No negative vibes natural hair vibes for 2021. We're not doing that this year. I played around in 2020, but we're not playing around in 2021. All right, y'all, so I know that this video is a little bit all over the place. It wasn't really planned. Like, I kind of knew that I wanted to talk about these things and give y'all, like, an update and, I guess, kind of sort of a length check and also some 2021 goals. I hope that you got the gist of what I was, you know, trying to put out there. Am I an expert? Absolutely not. I'm still experimenting, still learning my hair, trying to figure things out with you all and just recording me figuring those things out. <laughs> We're just figuring it out as we go. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. Let me know if you can relate. Um, let me know what things have been working for you for your hair, um, some things that haven't been working for your hair. Let's just all have a discussion. Y'all might be putting me on to something that I should have been on a long time ago, but I didn't know until you until you told me. Um, but yes, y'all, that is it for this video. And as always, y'all, I'm so grateful and thankful for each and every one of y'all watching. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.